Are you a domestic terrorist? The TSA might say yes. Early last year, a wife and a mother of two children booked an airline ticket to New York for a family funeral. Her husband, a 20 plus year federal air marshal veteran, went to work a few days before his wife left and noticed something astonishing. He logged on his federal air marshal service operating computer system. There was his wife's name underneath her. It read domestic terrorist. Once the initial shock wore off, he ran to his supervisor and asked him how in the world this could have happened. The response was, you can't tell her. You just have to let it work itself out. What does that mean? He asked, and he got the same response. Bill then realized that since his wife was labeled a domestic terrorist, that meant whenever she traveled, there would be, <laughs> there would be teams of highly trained air marshals following her and her children every move on the airport and on the plane and documenting what they wore, what she said, and attempting to eavesdrop on conversations and writing an internal report documenting everything. Wow. It was his job to assign the air marshal's team. Uh, okay. And it was his job to assign the air marshal's team to special missions to follow his wife to New York and back home. Oh, that's an amazing story already. It gets worse. Uh, this was shocking. First, Bill's wife has never been charged of a crime or questioned by law enforcement about being a terrorist. Second, Bill holds a top secret security clearance with the federal air marshals, and apparently he lives with a terrorist. This should have sparked an immediate investigation by the agency. Yeah, who labels her a terrorist? Who gets the power? Can they just pick and choose anybody? Or is there like an AI just mass flagging people as terrorists? I think that might be what's going on here. Let's see here. This should have sparked an immediate investigation by the agency into what he and his TSA designated terrorist wife were up to, yet the agency doesn't seem at least bit concerned. Yeah, they're like, oh, bro, your wife's a terrorist? It'll work itself out. Like 9-11 did? <laughs> Seriously, what? what do you mean? Either she's a terrorist or she's not. Right after this conversation with the air marshal's leader, Bill returned to his job, which granted him access to very sensitive government databases. This fact alone suggests the label given to his, his wife is false. Why wouldn't the agency seem to care? This situation needs, this situation meets the very insider definition, the very definition of insider threat. Yeah, you have a potential terrorist who's married to someone of top secret government clearance who could... Yeah, this would be the guy who could let other 9-11s happen. And you're like, oh, his wife, who cares if his wife's a terrorist or not? Lastly, TSA paperwork noted that Bill's wife broke into the United States Capitol building on January 6th. Oh, there it is. She went to see Trump. She saw Trump speak on January 6th. And everyone who went that day is a terrorist. Apparently. That's crazy. Is that what really what it is? He was in disbelief. His wife had been to D.C. on January 6th. I mean, I knew it. However, she was nowhere near the Capitol building and could prove it with her GPS locations, Uber, and hotel receipts. She was at a hotel several miles away, the Capitol building. Bill then called Air Marshal National Council and asked for help. We immediately contacted the Congress with Bill's concerns. And as demonstrated at the letter below, Honorable Chairman Ray, Honorable Reskova, TSA, Dear Ray and Pekoski, my, off my office recently became aware of at least one individual who may have been inappropriately placed on the TSA's watch list after peacefully engaging in First Amendment protected activity on January 6, 2021. This individual reported that he or she traveled by plane on January 6 and January 4th, attended a rally on January 6, like I wanted to do, that, uh, that occurred at the Ellipse. According to this individual, on January 6, he or she went to the Ellipse to peacefully exercise their First Amendment, his or her First Amendment rights 
at the rally, walked past Pennsylvania Avenue and 9th Street, and then walked to his or her hotel. This individual asserted that he or she never was in or near the U.S. Capitol on January 6th. This individual left Washington, D.C. region on January 7th. According to information obtained by my office, this individual recently flagged by law enforcement air marshal service as and needing special missing coverage, SMC, TSA documents this individual. The TSA documents connected to this individual noted that the reason TSA needed to assign SMC on this person is because he or she unlawfully entered the United States Capitol building on 1-6-21. Further, my office was told that this category of code assigned to this individual was for a suspected domestic terrorist. If an individual's account, if the individual account of her is true, it appears that TSA assigned SMC to the individual based on false information. The TSA is just flagging everyone who went to Washington, D.C. in January 6th as a terrorist. <laughs> That's guy, They got to be. But here's the thing, though. Are they doing that with the Democrats? Are they doing it with people who just happen to be traveling there? Or is there something more? What's... Because the... I could see them wanting to target innocent Trump supporters. But what about innocent Democrats? F them? I guess so. Um, further... This report raises serious concerns about whether the TSA law enforcement has assigned other individual SMCs for merely attending January 6th rallies and participating in First Amendment protected activity. I respectfully request a briefing from your office on the alleged incident and also if you could provide me information on no later than August 2021. Okay, but this is really old then. How is determining whether attendant Okay. July 26, 2021. Did anything happen with this? Okay. I was like, where's this article going? It didn't matter. They were nowhere near the Capitol. They further advised that it was their belief that the same supervisor who made the decision to establish the list with these people's names as it was the unit's job to develop special missions for the agency. So, okay. What this guy... There's someone in charge of the SMC, these um these teams, air marshal teams. And like every government agency, they have to justify themselves. Why do we need more funding? Because we have all these domestic terrorists. Where do they all come from? Well, we just happened to label everyone on January 6th a terrorist. But look at all these terrorists we have to track now. We need more money. The TSA have the authority to label anyone a terrorist presents. Can label anyone a terrorist presents a host of issues. The TSA is an administrative agency, not a law enforcement agency. It has no investigative authority. Bill's wife contacted the FBI and they said she had never been any under investigation. If this is case, the how does the TSA label someone a terrorist, but also, but also have someone within, within the TSA without any research or fellow follow up, manipulate the national security databases and enter the false information that Bill's wife had broken into the Capitol. That is really weird though, because that is slander technically. They're saying she committed a crime when she didn't. Those actions suggest that it's not a mere incompetence, but a nefarious intentional act that cause these uh, that have a political purpose. If the TSA decided to make a list of folks who traveled to DC and label them terrorists, that would be a huge overstep of authority. However, to take an extra step of falsely writing that a person committed a crime, criminal act of fault, evidence, or whatever, that's horrifying. The AMNC believes that hundreds, if not thousands, of innocent Americans may be falsely labeled terrorists by the TSA. If Bill's wife weren't married to a federal air marshal, she would have never known she was being surveilled by teams of air marshals whenever she booked travel. She would never have known that why alarms go off when she goes to the airport ticket counter to check in. 
Each time she goes through security, alarms go off. Each time she's sent to a TSA secondary screening and TSA reverse screening, she must endure further inspections. And that's what it is. It's the punishment. They will punishment using bureaucracy. And that's what they can. The um, the process is the punishment a lot of times. A lot of times, like, uh, like Kyle Rittenhouse, he got off scot-free, but going through the trial was a punishment even of itself. He should not have been charged. <sighs> so if you guys like this type of content, you like my commentary, please leave a like down below, subscribe, share with your friends. I put a lot of passion into these videos. I get really mad and I let it go for you. Oh, fucking hate me. I get so mad.